Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this lecture, I'm going to show you that how you can use the combined framework, which is the reactive framework from Apple, to perform a networking request and display the results on the screen. We'll be using a weather application, so our UI and also the URL that we're going to use will be Open Weather Map. You can also see that I'm not using a Swift UI application. I'm using a UI kit application. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new service. This particular service is going to allow us to connect to a particular URL, which will be for Open Weather Map, and it's going to allow us to fetch the data from the service. So we're going to go ahead and start with importing combine. Now for this particular lecture or video, you have to make sure that you are registered on Open Weather Map, which is going to allow you to give you the API key that you can use to fetch the weather information. Class Web Service. And I'm going to go ahead and create a particular function over here, which I'll call Fetch Weather. This is going to return us something, which we'll talk about later. The first thing we need is some sort of a URL. Now, I already have a URL, so I'm simply going to copy that URL. Now, the URL is hard-coded, meaning that it only gets the weather for Houston. All right, so URL equals to something. You can see it is hard-coded to Houston, and it is going to give you the weather in Fahrenheit. So please go ahead and sign up for the Open Weather Map so you can get the API key. Now I can get the weather URL equals to URL, passing in the string, which we already have, which is URL. And in the else block, we can do something. This will be a guard statement because we can actually do something over here. We can say invalid URL or something. There we go. Now it's time for us to use the new APIs that are available for the URL session to perform reactive and more of a streamline with a combined framework. So if you check out URL session, you'll see that one of the things in this is Data Task Publisher. Now Data Task Publisher is going to return you a publisher which you can use to publish certain events. The first thing I'm going to pass is the weather URL. Now, if you see the map function, which is also called a transformation function, you'll see that the second one over here, the second overload function, is going to give you the data and the response, which is very similar to if you were using the URL session.share.datatask with URL. So we are going to use the map function and we're going to change this and only get the data part because that's the one that we need. Now, this is just the data, which is just bytes. We need to convert it into some sort of a class and we don't even have a class. So let's go ahead and first go ahead and create a class. I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to call this weather. Weather. Now the class model will be very, very simple to create. There will be a couple of different things we're gonna do. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a weather class. So here's our weather class. The weather consists of the temperature and it consists of the humidity. And it also consists of a placeholder, which means that what if the weather doesn't exist or maybe the weather service is down, some sort of a placeholder to return in case of an error. We also need another class to represent the weather response. Because if you check out the weather response, if I go ahead and open this up over here, and you'll see that if you go to the open weather map, this is actually the weather response that you get. All right. So we're interested in this main part, but all of this main part, including the temperature and the humidity, which we're interested in, is actually inside a parent object. So we need to create that parent object to be able to decode it successfully. OK, 
Currently, we do have the child object, which is a weather part, which contains the temperature and humidity, which is this part. But we don't really have a parent object. So let's go ahead and create a parent object. You can create or call your parent object anything you want. I'm simply going to call it weather response. Weather response has one property called main, which is actually the weather type property. The reason it is called main is because in the parent object, in the JSON that we are returning, there is a key called main which contains the weather object. I've also made sure that the name in our classes or the structures for weather is temperature and humidity, which is TMP and humidity. If you don't really like those names and you want to customize your name, you can definitely use coding keys to do that. But just to make it simple, we are going to use the same exact keys or property names as they are returned from JSON. All right, so now we can go back over here and we can work on our data. Once we get the data, we can actually decode it. And there is a function which is called decode. The type will be in this case a weather response. So weather response dot self. And the decoder that we're going to use is called the JSON decoder. Great. Now, in this case, if you check out the map function, it is actually going to give you the weather response because that's what you just decoded. But most probably, you don't really want to return weather response. You want to return the actual weather. So let's go ahead and return the actual weather, $.main. You can also specify that where exactly do you want to receive these things on. So receive on run loop dot main. And then finally, we're going to call it erase to any publisher, which means that any publisher, it can be any publisher. It's not tied to some sort of a, a typed or concrete publisher. It can be any publisher. So it's going to box the type into and return the publisher in that box type. We do want to return it, so let's go ahead and say return and update our function to make sure that we are using any publisher, which is going to return us the weather. And the second part is the actual error. Let's go ahead and build this. This should be all fine. Now we can actually move on to our view controller. So let's go and jump into our view controller. Since we are using a UI kit application, and now we can start using our web service. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an instance of our web service, private var web service, which is type of web service equals to the web service. Obviously, you don't need that part. Great. And I'm going to also make a cancelable, which is going to cancel this service so that we have a reference to that, any cancelable. This is actually part of the combine framework. So let's go ahead and import combine also. Import combine. Now inside the view.load, this will be typed. Inside the view.load, we can actually go ahead and call the service. So self.webservice.fetchweather. It's going to return us an error. And that error can now return, or it will return the actual publisher. All right. So, well, not the actual publisher, but some sort of a publisher. So if the error comes, first of all, we're not interested in that part, in, and now we can return, in case of error, we can return the placeholder weather, so that we can display at least something. So weather dot placeholder. All right. Let's see what's going on over here. Maybe we messed it up. Let's see. Let's go ahead and compile it first. Dot catch and then go ahead and return something. So the, we are ignoring this the first part. And now we are simply going to return the weather. In case of error, we're simply going to return the placeholder weather, which in this case would be basically nothing. Dot map. And now we can actually go ahead and do something over here. So 
if the weather actually succeeds, then we can actually go ahead and dollar sign of zero dot temp. And we might have to evaluate this so that we can actually print this out. Right now it will be nullable. So it might not actually appear as you expect. And we also need to assign it to something. We don't really have anything that we can put the weather on. So let's go to the storyboard and try to get something on the screen. First of all, I'm gonna go over here and change maybe the background color to some other color. Let's say in this case, we can change it to orange and we can add some sort of a label. So let's go ahead and add a label over here. You can make the size of the label a little bit bigger if you want so that it's, you can see it. And you can actually adjust the label you want and we are just going to apply some constraints to it. And we're also going to sh make sure that this label is in the center. There we go. We haven't really connected to the label. So for that, we will use the IV outlets. So let's go ahead and create an IV outlet. Week var. And then we can call it temperature label, UI label. We still need to connect the temperature label. You can, if you want, create these controls dynamically, but since this is not really about controls or creating controls, we're simply using the IV outlets and all those kind of things to create the label. Once we are at the map, we are going to convert our temperature, which is in double format, to a string format. Once we have converted it into a string format, then we can go over here and assign it. So assign to the text property of the label. So self dot temperature label. We're not really capturing the cancelable or whatever the fetch weather or whatever the assign is going to return. So let's go ahead and assign that also self dot cancelable or else we will not have any uh, relationship or the retaining of that particular memory. We do have a problem over here because the temperature is in fact a, you can see that it is actually an optional type and not really the concrete implementation. So we can go ahead and unwrap it over here. You can also use a different way of unwrapping to make sure that this is not null. And that's pretty much it. The only last thing we need to do is to make sure that we can actually make a request we have to add the transport security in the app.config. So let's go ahead and add that and open this up and add arbitrary loads. You can also provide that which, which website is accessible, but for time being, I'm simply going to allow the arbitrary loads. Now let's go ahead and run this application. It's going to make a request and get the current weather of Houston and display it hopefully on our screen. And there we go. Since everything is hard coded to Houston, we were able to make a request to the Open Weather Map API, fetch all the information, which in this case is the temperature as well as the humidity, and we were able to display this information. Now this is great and we can actually see the temperature on our screen, but we have a big problem. Let's say that if I go over here and somebody types in a different API key, which doesn't exist, or maybe the service is not available, or they write the name of the city that doesn't exist or doesn't uh, belong in the API. So let's go ahead and change this seven to R, which means that this should not work now because I have basically uh, changed the API key, which is not correct. If I go ahead and run the application again, you're going to see that it's, start, it's going to start crashing. And the reason it's crashing is obviously we're trying to unwrap something that is null. So we need to fix that. So we can go over here and we can say dot map. And we can say over here, if let, you can use if let, you can use guard if you want, temperature equals to dollar sign of zero dot temperature. So this is going to unwrap it. And now we can return whatever you want to return, which in this case, 
can be a simple temperature. So dollar sign zero dot temperature. We can even make it nicer by adding a Fahrenheit symbol. There we go. Else, we will return something else. So return error, and you can replace it with your own error. And we will remove that particular line. Let's go ahead and build that again. And I'm not sure why it is. Oh, we don't really need dollar sign over here. The temperature already has a value. So there we go. Let's go ahead and build it. And let's go ahead and run it again. And now you can see it's actually giving you error instead of blowing up. And now if I go back to my web service and revert it back to the correct API key and run it again, I would be able to get the actual temperature right now, 79.16. So there you have it. We have used the combined framework and the reactive APIs to connect to a network or to perform a network request to uh, the Houston open weather map and we were able to get the data and display it on the screen. If you want to learn more about Surf UI and how to create applications using Surf UI framework, then check out my Udemy course, Surf UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is close to a nine hour course and I keep on adding new content as I learn more things about Surf UI. And you can see that this is the highest rated course on Udemy with more than 700 students enrolled right now. The course begins with explaining to you what exactly is Surf UI, how you can create simple views, but then dive into building list and navigation, and also state and binding. Then it jumps into the MVVM design pattern, which is the preferred design pattern to use when you are building your Surf UI applications. It also allows you to integrate web APIs with MVVM framework. Later on, we're gonna dive into gestures, property wrappers, forms, models, core data integration, as well as core ML integration. Yes, you can actually integrate, integrate core data with SIFUI, and I will show you how you can do that. Now, the best way to get this course is check out the YouTube description and you will find a link to a coupon that will take you to this course and you can enroll in this course. Now there are other links to the other courses also if you are interested in blockchain or augmented reality or MVVM, which is very important, then you can also find these coupons in the YouTube description. But please use those coupons that I have posted in the YouTube description. That will really help me and it will give you the best deal possible. Thank you so much for watching this video and for your continuous support. And if you do have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.